Hello. So uh, I was thinking about uh, starting uh, recording a series of tutorials for uh, technicians that really want to get into the phone board repair thing. I know there's a lot of shops uh, that are doing uh, phone repairs, but uh, they actually just replace screens, cases, batteries, and so on. Um, well, they make the big box, but uh, there is the need to repair a logic board, a phone board, uh, from time to time, and uh, there you need a person with uh, with uh, some skills. So I'm gonna make a um, tutorial series. Um, I'm gonna start by this first one where uh, I will uh, just explain uh, what tools um, are like uh, minimum required uh, for you to to start uh, doing this. Um, <clears throat> and I'm gonna start a bit with the knowledge part because uh, you need some uh, basic electronics knowledge and if you kind of skipped the gymnasium or uh, the high school uh, physics classes you're gonna have to uh, get yourself self acquainted again with uh, with the ohms law and uh, a few stuff like that and uh, it's it's not that much it's not that difficult um, I uh, highly recommend you watching online tutorials and uh, trainings about it uh, but what I found uh, excellent is a guy that has a, has a YouTube channel uh, it's called MJ Lorton yeah and under his uh, playlists you're gonna find an electronics tutorial uh, let me see if I can find it uh, there's a really lots of uh, there it is so he has lots of information and electronic stuff on his channel he's a great guy and uh, he has a very very nice way of explaining things yeah so uh, starting from here you can watch these videos there are not that ma many there are 14 it starts from scratch it explains you about electricity voltage uh, the power consumption ohms law which is a great thing to handle and it's not that much of your time uh, um, just to watch this and uh, kind of get a, uh, an idea of uh, what's uh, what's happening in, in electronics uh, so this is the first part it's not cheap is it's like um, zero uh, cost for you just to watch it and get yourself acquainted with electronics all right so um, <clears throat> then uh, I don't know uh, about the tools what to start with so I'm gonna think about uh, the whole process since I get a phone to opening it and then uh, uh, move further with with the diagnosis so as in tools the first thing you need to open a phone is the screwdrivers I actually use only four um, I'm using tool screwdrivers some of them are 3d some of them are just regular ones um, so you need like um, I don't think you can see on the camera it's like a Philips the pentalobe the triangle one I don't know exactly how it's named uh, and uh, the Philips and and that um, screwdriver that looks like a Philips but it has a hole in it I don't know how it's called uh, whatever these are the four screwdrivers I have them for one year now uh, they are still working great so if you buy I highly recommend you go for tool like this one yeah, this is a very very good brand and it will last you a whole lot of time uh, I'm holding them here in a holder and they are staying on a magnet so they are magnetized all the time yeah, so basically uh, I was thinking that when you start working on a phone you basically remove the the two screws now I'm gonna refer mostly to iPhones because I do iPhones and um, then I think this can be extrapolated to other brands um, then to remove uh, the display I'm using 
first of all a heater this is a very cheap one uh, nothing extraordinary with it uh, I'm just uh, I have it set to 70 degrees centigrade and uh, I have a piece of paper here so I don't put the phone directly on the plate and I put the phone I know it's a bit smaller but I leave the phone like this for, um, I don't know, a couple of minutes, then move it like that for another couple of minutes, and then it's ready to uh, use a, a suction uh, pump to, to remove the display. So this is the only thing I use it for, for opening phones, 70 degrees. You can do it out uh, on your own risk. And um, a lot of people, well, good technicians, uh, just uh, remove the uh, the screens using this kind of tools just prying it up I had quite uh, bad experiences because I kind of ruined some screens and since then I bought this uh, Refox tool yeah it's the RS50 it's an exceptional tool, you can use it for all sorts of uh, phones uh, to open them. I won't explain you how it works because you can find a lot of tutorials online about it. You can also use it for uh, uh, pressing down phones with its press uh, when you glue the, the screen back together or the back uh, covers for, for uh, other than iPhones. Um, it's a great tool. It's not expensive. It's about, uh, I think, seventy dollars. Uh, but the problem is, it's extremely heavy, and uh, the cost of shipping is higher than its price. But uh, um, I've ruined in my life like I know three screens, and uh, it paid off after buying it because I didn't train any screen afterwards all right so uh, now that the phone is opened uh, I think uh, I'm gonna use again the screwdrivers to uh, remove the shields and then I'm gonna use something to pry off the connectors from the from the uh, board um, for that there is a special tool that I don't well, I have it somewhere, but I don't know where it is because I don't use those plastic ones. I'm actually using these uh, tweezers. Um, they are a bit bulkier, uh, and I find it easier to remove the to remove the connectors with it. Um, as in tweezers, you need some of them. Uh, I have a huge lot variation of tweezers here, uh, but I'm not really using them almost never so 99.9% um, of the time I'm using just these two so this bulky big one for uh, removing connectors I also use it on the stencils when uh, when I solder uh, when I reball large chips like CPUs I use this uh, this one because it's it's a bit longer I have a good leverage and uh, keeping the hot air uh, enough uh, uh, further from my hand it I'm not gonna get a burn on, on my fingers using this one um, the second one that I use uh, is this one uh, this is the greatest tweezer ever uh, it's called uh, it's made by tool and it's called tool 3d so this is an extremely fine and sharp one it's perfect for a uh, phone repair um, these I buy a lot uh, they last a lot uh, and they are great they are very uh, light you don't feel it in your hand as you feel this one and uh, they are small and uh, with an extremely fine tip so I highly recommend you get these they are not very expensive and uh, as in uh, small tools uh, let me see what else. This is the third most used one. Is the knife? Uh, it has a number 11 blade. Uh, you can find um, um, uh, these types of holders everywhere. Um, 
these ones you can just uh, unscrew them and uh, switch the blade uh, <clears throat> the blades you can find also to buy I'm using number 11 I think most of the people do um, lately I found that uh, I could buy this from a drugstore uh, from a pharmacy sorry um, and the pharmacy sells them as a surgical equipment they look like this in my country I don't know if you can find them there too in your countries um, they are a lot cheaper uh, they are sterile if it matters uh, and uh, yeah they are great they last a lot of time so this is another surgical blade number 11 uh, you can find them also, not the surgical ones, but the regular ones and uh, paper supply stores. Uh, but they are more expensive than the ones in the pharmacy. Um, what else? I'm using these two things. Three, sorry. Uh, this one I use for uh, cleaning the underfill on the boards. Uh, this one um, I use usually to pry off stuff, but uh, you can also use it uh, instead of the instead of this blade to clean the underfill between the parts. Yeah, and uh, again this one I use it to pry out uh, CPUs or uh, NANs when I desolder them. That's the only purpose of this tool for me. Uh, what else do we have here? I have this one that I use a lot when I spread the paste, when I rebolt stuff. This is what I use. I use it to uh, to spread the, the solder paste over the stencil. So these are the tools that I use most of the times. Uh, well, all the time, not most of the time. And I also use uh, a lot of brushes. Um, to clean the board so if you watch my videos you saw that I'm a bit pedantic with it and I clean the boards a lot I use IPA 99% uh, I have here a recipient with the IPA I put the board in and then I scrub the board I have uh, three different brushes this is a very hard one this is a medium one and this is a very soft one so in the cleaning process I use them uh, hard first medium then uh, the soft one so everything that I showed you now it's not expensive really expensive stuff uh, I bought this cheap and I use them from for uh, a lot of time well I started this uh, this is a hobby for me so it's not my job uh, I do this only in my spare free time um, and uh, I started microsoldering back in last September, so it's not even one year since I started it, and I got all these parts since. Um, nothing failed, uh, only I broke one of the tool tweezers and I had to replace it. But other than the rest, everything is there. Uh, it's also the this air pump is very useful for me because I can uh, pour alcohol and then blow it just to clean the boards um, yeah so uh, next thing uh, I think we can go to the soldering part so for soldering I use the action T3B I think it's called let me see let me share with you this screen Yeah, so this is the station that I use, is the 3TB um, action uh, station. You can find it cheaper than you can see it here in this screen. Um, it actually uses the JBC tips uh, and they are the best tips ever. Uh, let me get back to the top camera so we can see what I was showing you. Uh, the tips are interchangeable. Uh, you see here I have lots of tips. You get knife, you get this tip that it's bent. Um, 
another knife one the most one used ones are the knife tips for me the bent one uh, and the straight one <clears throat> the straight one I don't have here but I have uh, this one that was bent and then it broke and I use it as like a straight one yeah so that's that for uh, for the soldering equipment it's don't don't go cheap when you when you buy this uh, you, you need to buy a good equipment for uh, soldering otherwise you're gonna have difficulties especially if you don't know how to micro solder you need good tools i don't say go out and buy the jbc which is the best of the best because it's thousands of euros and it's gonna take you a lot of time to uh, to make that money back but um, you can get cheap ones like that um, over the internet as in uh, soldering uh, I'm using also a lot of flux uh, and a lot of uh, soldering stuff like pastes let's talk about them all right so the most used one is the leaded solder uh, it's a hundred and uh, this is a uh, 60-40 uh, so it has 40% uh, lead um, this is made by tool it's a 183 non leaded solder yeah I usually like the leaded one <coughs> sorry uh, I usually use the, the leaded one and then we have the paste which is extremely important so paste we use to reball stuff either we reball ICs or we reball boards or we reball or we try to solder various chips we need several types of uh, of paste so first we need the 183 paste this is a mechanic 183 that I use to solder all the chips and CPUs, NANs, everything. Uh, so this is 183. Then the most used one for the boards to solder back the sandwich boards is the mechanic 148. So 148 I used to to solder back uh, the boards on the interposer here. It's a kind of a low melt, but not very low. There is also an option that is uh, uh, that is 138 so the 138 one uh, is a bit crappy uh, I don't like it very much I don't use it a lot I use it for example when I solder um, uh, chips on displays so I don't heat up the display too much but that's a different story and then there's the 217 paste uh, this is the paste that I use rarely um, I use it usually when I repair the pads on a board if you have broken pads here um, I'm using uh, some lugs to uh, to solder back there to redo the the board so the, that lug I'm gonna solder it with 217 to the board because then we're gonna go with 148 over to solder them back so um, it won't desolder from the board using the 217 paste yeah so that's that about uh, about soldering um, I don't think there's much advice I can give you there um, then um again about soldering as i mentioned about uh about uh, soldering the boards together and desoldering them you need a hot plate for that i first started with a mechanic ix5 mini so it's this one uh, this is a universal one it works from X to 12 Pro Max I use it for 14 so I found a way to fit them there you can set it up for low melt or uh, high melt solder it has a it has a button there when you set it to high melt it's gonna heat up to, to 
220 degrees otherwise it's gonna stay at 170 I think uh, this was a very good one I used it a lot of time but then I upgraded to this one um, this one is more like a model uh, friendly because it has interchangeable plates that look like this so this is a place plate here that I use for uh, 12 series you have for 11 you have a lot of plates like 13 14 and I have a blank universal plate here uh, that uh, you can see so this is great not necessarily because it has place for all the models it's because it's way faster than the the small one um, and I got used to the temperatures it uses and uh, it's it works also under the microscope and uh, it's a uh, it's a great uh, tool to have um, I think it's the best one on the market all right so again if we speak about soldering you need also stencils and stencils are made for various phone models this one is uh, a stencil for the 12 series it goes from 12 mini to 12 pro max and then you really need a lot of them and I advise you to get good stencils especially if you do CPUs and stuff like that so I have here lots of stencils uh, I think this is for 7 this is something else this is a stencil for uh, 14 series uh, stencil for uh, 11 series and so on so there's like many 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 that uh, I use um, other stuff that I have here in this box is this one so this is also thing that I use a lot these are soldering lugs uh, and I use them when I repair uh, repair the boards uh, the board pads if they are broken pads I use these lugs I don't think you can uh, see them well here but if you watch my videos uh, you can uh, you will uh, see them under the microscope and you'll figure out how it works um, you can also rebuild rebuild traces with those and um, stuff like that I'm, you can also rebuild traces with uh, wires I have here jumper wires uh, I'm usually using the 0.02 millimeters uh, you have insulated and conductive as they call so this doesn't have any insulation on them this one is insulated 0 0.02 millimeters and I also have a conductive of 0 0.01 millimeter uh, this is again made by tool very good brand uh, I use it a lot and they are great yeah and then in time you're gonna need parts uh, I when I started I, I bought chips but for example iPhone 7 audio chips I bought them and they were all faulty so lately I'm only using donor boards uh, to help and in this box I have a lot of boards donor boards it's like iCloud lock boards that I get from uh, various uh, friends that have uh, repair shops um, that do not do board level repairs you can just buy them quite cheap uh, out there on the internet all right next uh, I would say you will need a multimeter so a multimeter is extremely important when I don't record videos I use this Fluke 179 uh, you can get basically any kind of multimeter out there um, even the cheap cheap ones these Fluke ones are a bit more expensive they are made in the US these models and uh, anyway you need a multimeter that has a diode mode reading because that is the most used uh, option uh, measure in in phone repair uh, so in diode mode reading um, you do all the stuff 
uh, on the phones you rarely use ohms mode or uh, voltage yeah so you can get basically any kind of multimeter this the fluke ones i like uh, because they beep so under the diod mode you get a beep when you measure stuff on boards i don't necessarily need to look at the multimeter um, let probe on ground and I just probe around and I don't know if you hear that but it makes a beep yeah I don't know if you can hear that if it's a full short then it's gonna do a continuous beep yeah okay so this is the multimeter I use when I don't record uh, any videos uh, it's here it's handy uh, and uh, um, it's very good. Um, I also use a Unity multimeter when I record videos. It's a digital one. I can connect it to the computer. It looks like this. Yeah, this is a more uh, uh, this is a more evolved one uh, than the Fluke model. There, uh, it has a lot of uh, different features. It's not very expensive. Well, compared to the multimeter from Fluke, that's in the same range with the same features, it's way cheaper. Um, the advantage of this is that I can have uh, I can have it on the screen like that, and you can see whenever I measure something, you can see it there uh, up on the screen what's going on. All right, so uh, that's about the multimeter. Uh, next thing you need, and almost the last thing. So next thing you need, it's a microscope. Yeah. Uh, this is a bit big to show it to you like this. Uh, I bought one of the cheapest ones on the market. Um, the problem with, with the microscopes is that they are very heavy so the shipment is quite expensive uh, depending on the country you are in uh, you need to look uh, for something that you can buy as close to you as possible if you buy it from China it will cost a lot to ship um, I bought this one from uh, I think it was Banggood Bang, I don't Banggood don't even remember how to spell it. Yeah, microscope. Microscope is extremely important for me. Don't go for this crazy digital scrap. It's not good for absolutely anything. Um, the experience you get when you look on, on the microscope lens it's completely different than than the digital ones because you have a 3d depth yeah so you need to look for a, a microscope like this one here it's a trinocular meaning that you can also record but um, you can uh, also uh, uh, look uh, in the on the oculars and see the part while recording that's why it's called trinocular there's also a model I'm not sure exactly how it's called that it's using you will block one of the eyepieces to use the camera and then you lose the, the depth uh, field uh, what's interesting here for example I'm in Europe yeah? so this one has an option to ship from Czech Republic this is extremely great it comes fast for me uh, because it's quite close to me and the shipment is really cheap yeah like you see here 5.6 euros while while i buy stuff from china it costs me up to 70 euros just the shipment because i don't buy aliexpress never buy from aliexpress buy from trusted sources uh, when I buy from China, I buy from DIY Fix Tool. So, or you may know this as China Phone Fix. You have, you can find here absolutely anything you want, as in phone repairs. Uh, they ship via FedEx. Uh, it's a bit expensive, but it comes in five days in Europe. So, um, 
that's there's that so everything i bought from these guys was great and the service is exceptional yeah and uh, choose your microscope uh, wisely uh, then the next thing is the i forgot to mention when speaking about soldering uh, is the flux so i used two types of flux is the uh, Amtec rma something let's see one of them is nc559 yeah uh, this one i use mostly when reballing uh, chips or cpus and uh, as a general stuff on uh, on uh, working on the boards i use the other one that's a bit uh, different color as you can see there it's called i don't know i'm going to open it it's also amtec it's called rma 233 well this is bought from china so it has the label it says made in usa i highly doubt it's the original stuff but it works great for me doesn't smell it's not expensive and there's also uh, something from action i haven't tried it i like it because it's clear but i don't know how it works yet i just bought it it felt interesting yeah so that's about the flux uh, if you're at soldering again it's important to have a good uh, a good uh, hot air machine hot air gun yeah so always choose something that looks like this where the air comes from the pipe it doesn't have the fan here the ones that have the fan here are crap yeah again you have options really expensive ones but the best ones in the world are the jbc and then as a cheap alternatives you can go to uh, to Aten. For example, I'm using this one, Aten 862D. This one. I buy it from a European supplier. It looks like this. It has three nozzles and I bought separate angled ones. I needed the six, eight, six, six and eight millimeters ones those i use usually yeah so this is a great hot air gun machine uh, you can also go for the quick hot air station which is also cheap and extremely reliable i don't know quick i think it's this one a61 dw yeah quite similar to the atan uh, i like at and best but uh, they are the same quality yeah so choose one of these do not go cheap do not go for uh, crap uh, things on it uh, and uh, third uh, as in power supplies i first started with the very very cheap ones you need a power supply because you need to see if the phones have a short well, there's two kind of supplies here uh sorry i didn't switch the camera one sec so you have a power supply first of all for charging it looks like this right um, this is a mechanic one uh, it's called iCharge 8 pro it's extremely good i love it uh, when you plug in a phone Yeah, it shows you the voltage and the power consumption there uh, it also has the uh, wi-fi charging here uh, and it charges your phone um, this is a good tool for investigating charging issues right and then you need a power supply that uh, uh, looks like this one a lab power supply uh, you need this one to test uh, the board boot behavior and power consumption let me explain you how this works this is a really cheap one 
looks like this. Uh, you can set up the voltage, uh, put it on 4 volts. You usually use 4.1 for the phones, and then you can. Um, this is this works in constant current. Um, this is the great thing. You can uh, set um, you can set up how much current you want the power supply to deliver, and this is uh, very important. So when you plug in something to the power supply, it will show you how much current it uh, it takes to boot. Uh, this is a bit. Uh, difficult in my position here let me see if I can show you how this works so we can see here that the power supply is configured to deliver 4 volt and uh, the, the amps they are almost up almost to the maximum this is the 3 uh, amps power supply here if I short this yeah you're gonna see that it delivers 2.6 amps and you can see the voltage dropped to 0.69 volts yeah so this is the constant current also the constant current light uh, lit up here um, you can connect a board to it uh, this squid is extremely useful. It has, uh, it goes into the power supply here on the positive and negative terminals, and on the other side, it has these alligator clamps that, that you can un universally use, or it has, uh, it has connectors for various phone models from um, iPhone 6 to iPhone 14. Yeah, so if I connect this one to a 12 board look closely here on the power supply what happens when I prompt to boot again this is a defective uh, board it's not gonna have a proper boot behavior but here you can see the amperage it takes to boot see and now it's just boot looping this is a very important tool um, in uh, investigating uh, issues with with the phones but we'll go back in a future tutorial to the power supplies okay so uh, I think there's only one more thing that I want to show you let me pull this back and clear the table Okay, I'm sorry for that. Uh, actually, there's uh, two things that I want to show you. So, first one is the uh, board holder. I use this WL1. It's the best for me. Um, as in the weight of it, the height of it, it goes well under the microscope. It's quite small. Uh, when I started off, I had this mechanic one. As you can see, this is way larger. It's double, way bigger, um, but it's it's not that heavy as this one is, and you need something heavy when working on a board. And then I use this one for uh, face ID repairs. Uh, this is a, a more simpler one. And then for uh, soldering again, I forgot to mention uh, when you need to solder back the board so starting from iPhone uh, X onwards the boards are like this made of two boards the sandwich board it's the bottom board that has usually the RF stuff on it and it's the core board the top board that has the CPU and everything else and they are glued together they are soldered together like this um, when you desolder one you will need to reball the board so to reball it you need to have stencils there's two types of stencils there's one like this one 
yeah these are very important you need to get good quality ones because it's extremely difficult to uh, to rebold those especially the 12 series and you have the stencil so you put a border you put the stencil somehow somewhere yeah like that and then you spread the um, you spread the paste over over the, the holes and then I remove the stencil um, the paste is still there and then I heat up that board so I can get the balls formed you can see this in my videos and I do I will do later ones so this is one type of uh, stencils for ball reballing where you actually need to remove the stencil before applying the heat yeah. uh, this is great uh, you need some time to get used to it and uh, figure out how it works best for you uh, it, as I said it's not easy you're gonna have a lot of failures then there's this type of board reballing I have here for uh, various models if I have a 12 board we're gonna look at the 12 model this is a dirty one Okay, so this looks like this interesting part is that here you put a board in yeah then you put a stencil over this is made by Charlie you put the stencil then yeah then you spread the flux all over it and uh, then after uh, the, so the paste solder paste all over it then uh, you put this on top it has, this has magnets and keeps it tight then you heat up the whole area it's not great it would be great if it would work great but uh, this also warps a lot so you need to pay a lot of attention I use usually use for the 12 models the other uh, stencil that I showed you but if you have a bulkier uh, board like like this uh, 12 Pro Max one um, then it's easier to use uh, this type of stencil on it again it's a matter of preference yeah and I guess um, I've been going through all the tools that I need um, I think this is it for uh, for me um, I can't uh, seem to have anything uh, else in my mind now um, and um, yeah I think uh, we're gonna see each other on a future uh, tutorial movie Cheers.